Hi, my name is Emily Dozwa and I live in Ottawa, which is in Canada, and yeah, it's super cold here. So I decided I needed an indoor hobby, hence talking to no one on video. <laughs> Fun fact, on December 29th here in Ottawa, it was actually colder than it was at Everest Base Camp and some places on Mars. Yeah, great. So when I'm not busy hibernating, I work here in Ottawa as a wedding and portrait photographer, and I also did a lot of conceptual work when I was a teenager. I am notoriously bad at keeping up with social media, but I will do my best to try and upload regular content here. So first, I'm going to be explaining what a 365 project is, why it's harder than it sounds, and I'll go into a little bit of my experiences with 365 projects, what I found works and what doesn't, and then I'll end off with some tips and tricks to complete your 365 successfully and use it to improve your skills as a photographer. So a 365 project is pretty self-explanatory. Uh, the goal is to take a picture every day for 365 days or one year. Uh, most people also aim to edit and share a photo every day. Um, I found that part to be really tricky, but it does help with holding you accountable when people are looking out to see your work. Um, it makes it harder to give up on. <laughs> Have you ever felt like really motivated to change something in your life? Maybe sometime around December 31st, but then given up after like a week or a month? This is exactly the same thing. It sounds really simple, it sounds so easy, and then it just becomes boring. We see beautiful content all the time. We scroll through Instagram and we're looking at everybody's carefully curated highlight reels. But by committing to take a picture every day for a year, eventually you're going to run into a bad day. You're going to wake up one morning and you're going to feel like you don't want to take a photo. There's nothing that you are feeling inspired about. And those are the days where you have to push yourself to do it anyway. To prove that I really believe in what I'm saying, I have some photos to show you. So I've actually attempted three different 365 projects. Um, my first one I started when I was 14 and I ended it after 324 days. The reason that I ended it was because I, towards the end I wasn't shooting every day anymore but I was just going back and editing old photos and trying to upload something just to have it there, and I felt like I had kind of missed the point of doing a 365. I had a Nikon Coolpix, and about halfway through the project, I ended up upgrading to a Nikon D3000 with an 18 to 55 millimeter kit lens. And for those who aren't familiar with Nikon cameras, a D3000 is an entry level SLR. I was using Photoshop Elements to edit, but I had no idea how to use it, and I thought that I was really fantastic. I was not. <laughs> oh god, these are terrible. So bad. <laughs> uh. As cringeworthy as these photos are, I did really improve a lot from the beginning to the end, and it was a great way to get all that selective coloring out of my system. I didn't set a lot of rules for myself with this project, which ended up kind of being my downfall. I wasn't really creating anything meaningful. I was just walking around with my camera and clicking, 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 and not really thinking about what I was trying to say with my work, and I wasn't thinking about composition, lighting, any of the technical aspects either. So even though that project was successful for 324 days, I felt like I didn't really learn as much as I could have if I had worked harder at it. That being said, setting too many restrictions can also cause problems with your 365. Um, I started my second 365 project around the time that I turned 17. I was struggling with depression and feeling unmotivated and I just wanted to bring more light into my life. And the light in my life at that point in time was my photography that I loved. So I wanted an excuse to do it more often. The day that I started my second 365 project, which I call my self-portrait project, um, I had been too unmotivated to get out of bed that day. So instead of going to school, I literally just laid in bed and stared at the ceiling, and I had really no sense of time passing until I heard my sisters getting off the school bus at the end of the driveway. And then I realized that I had used a whole day and I hadn't achieved anything. So I sat up in bed and I took a picture of 
me wrapped in my ratty old blanket and that was my day. That was how I spent that day and my achievement was documenting it and that really helped bring me out of the hole that I was in. So I started taking self-portraits every day. I didn't really want to commit to a 365 because I felt like I felt like if I didn't complete it then it then I would have failed. So instead I just said, you know, I'm going to take a self-portrait every day until I don't feel like doing it anymore. And that happened around day 54. Um I had done pretty good up until then and not missed very many days, but after that day I just didn't feel like doing it anymore, so I just put it aside and I had my 54 day self-portrait project. A few months later, I realized that I really hadn't been taking any photos and I missed it, so I decided to start up again, but instead of starting at 1, I just started at 55 and kept going from there. Which is how I ended up with 365 photos after two and a half years. So really, it wasn't a 365 project, but it was the best that I could do at that time. And I am really proud of it. I was trying to create a surreal, conceptual, self-portrait art piece every single day, which is a lot of pressure when you're in school full-time and working part-time and, you know, living a life. So on January 1st of this year, I finally found a happy medium between the two extremes and I started my third 365 project. So my personal rules for this project are simple, but not too simple. I do have to take a photo every day, but it doesn't have to be a self-port. With this project, I really want to focus on improving my skills. So I'm working on exposure, focus, composition, all kinds of things. So now you know what not to do, don't shoot for no reason, and don't set impossible goals. But how do you complete a 365 successfully? Okay, the first and most important rule is to shoot. Bring your camera with you everywhere, keep it handy. When I'm walking around the house, if I'm going into the living room, I'll bring my camera into the living room. If I get up to go to the kitchen, I'll just bring it with me. If I'm leaving the house, I will bring my camera as well, but usually I only bring one body and one lens. And unless I know that I need something wide or long, I'll usually grab my 50mm lens just because it's so compact and easy to carry around. And I also am a fan of using prime lenses because it forces you to work more on your composition because you can't just zoom in and out when you want to change the way your photo looks, you have to actually move around. Secondly, you can set a daily goal with your photo. So usually when I get up in the mornings, I'll look back at my last few days and think about what I could improve or what I want to try and do differently. Another important thing to do in the morning before you start shooting is think about your schedule for the day. So if you know you're going to be really swamped at work all day and then when you get home it's going to be dark, think about um, maybe taking a walk on your lunch hour, working on your street photography, or even, you know, working on maybe your astrophotography at night. Just think about your day and try and plan when would be a good time for you to work on your photography that day. I also found it helpful to join groups on Facebook and use hashtags on Instagram to find other photographers who are doing the same thing. Um, in the description, I will post some links to Facebook groups that I've found really helpful. Another tip that I have is not to stress too much about being inspired. You can't force a great idea. On days when you're feeling really uncreative, unmotivated, you don't know what to shoot, you feel like you've done everything, um, it can be helpful to look up a list of 365 prompts to give you some ideas, and there are tons of them out there. I'm not even going to bother linking to them because there's so many and they're so easy to find. Um, or you could also try and do a 10-step challenge. A 10-step challenge is when you have your camera and you take 10 steps in any direction and then you stop there and you have to take a picture from there. You can crouch down or you know move to try and get a better angle but you have to stay with your feet planted on the ground. Then once you have that shot you take another 10 steps in any direction and keep going. It's also important when you're doing a 365 project to take risks. It can be really easy to become stagnant and become set in a routine that you don't want to change. So if you're not careful by the end of your 365, you'll be looking back at 365 identical photos taken at the same place at the same time of day of the same subject and 
it's just important to try and take risks. You know that not every photo is going to work out, but some of the times it will. It's also helpful to keep a list of your ideas. So if you're just, you know, walking around and you have a great idea, but you don't have time to shoot it, you don't really know how, just write it down, keep it all in one place, and then on the days when you really don't know what you're going to shoot, go back through your list and see if anything pops out at you. And helpful motivational tools include rewards at the end. Yes, I am not above bribery. You can look ahead and look forward to mounting all of your pictures on a wall or making them into a beautiful scrapbook or uh, a professionally printed photo. And I think most importantly, remember that not every shot is going to be great. No one can be perfect 100% of the time and sometimes the things that you try are just not going to work out. Don't give up at that point. Just use that as a, a stepping stone and a learning tool and keep pushing, keep going, and you'll become better because of it. So now you know how to successfully complete a 365 project. I will leave links in the description below to some helpful Facebook groups that you can join to follow along with people who are doing a 365. And if you have any questions, feel free to comment and I'll try and address them in my next video. Bye. You want to be on YouTube too, Lucy? Hey, Lucy, hey, you want to be on YouTube? Yeah, say hi. Say hi, YouTube. Hi.